Good evening, everybody. Matrix here. As you can see, it's uh, just past midnight. Uh, I just want to do a quick recap on the trade on you today. Um, basically, it's a trade on Zoom IPO, and uh, I won't pull in my uh, executions here. So it was just one trade I bought here and I sold here. Uh, it was the execution time and uh, uh, at the price. So my average was 62.89, and I sold it at 64.40. And timestamps bought it at 12:09, sold it at 12:30. Okay. So uh, before I start, I want to talk about um, the type of trades and, and my thesis, the way I plan to trade. Right. Um, a lot of times, uh, I think what suits my style of trading is more of a trade to hold. So I I like to look for trades that trend all day. Initially, I can get in at a good price and basically hold that trade all day for a uh, large trend intraday swing. Okay, uh, and then there is the next type where uh, there's a move to move type of trade where um, which this trade is essentially was. So it was uh, from one move to here, and it's just one move, right? And I, I get out, I don't hold it, um, I don't keep anything lotto on, right? And then there is the scalp play, right? The scalp play would probably be like a quick bar down and then or maybe a quick two bar down where uh, you take a lot of size and uh, you basically go for a high win rate, right? So I very rarely do any scalp trades. A lot of my trades revolves around move to move trade or a trade to hold type of trade. Now, talking about Zoom here, it's the first day of the IPO, right? Uh, there is no chart history whatsoever. Um, and basically, uh, overall the market, we, we never know how it's really gonna trade. There is no sentiment on it, right? Now, um, looking at the big picture though, I mean, uh, Zoom was a pretty much, uh, pretty highly anticipated IPO, as well as uh, Pinterest today and um, I was reading the news and that uh, Zoom is a profitable company. They have turned the profit, um, unlike Lyft, uh, who is still unprofitable, right? Um, so that's a case in point uh, I want to take a look at. Um, I think they came out with the initial valuation of 36 bucks, and the stock opened really high here. Um, at $65. So uh, when IPO opens, the first print, the opening price, very important. So obviously, uh, just because of this opening valuation, there's a, a very bullish sentiment on it, right? Uh, right away. Um, but you can't say, oh, I'm just going to buy this. So uh, when the stock opened here, IPO, um, I always mark off the opening price. And as you can see, I watch it through the one, five, and the 30 minute chart. So the opening price is actually at 65, and then we have the highs at 66, right? So let's get back into this chart real quick. Um, $66, so right away at the open, I mark out 65 and 66. And uh, even though uh, there wasn't a thesis going into the stock yet, because we don't know how the stock will trade. So the reason why uh, trading IPOs is dangerous for new and beginning traders is because at the open of the IPO, it's already is always very sporadic, right? I mean, take a look at this candle. It went from uh, it opened at sixty five dollars, hit as high as sixty six, and then closed at sixty, or, or went to the lows at sixty three thirty. So there was of $2.70 range on the first minute, right? So you really can't develop any type of thesis on it. You don't know whether the market wants it to go long on the day yet or go short. Hence, um, I, I came into this trade without, with the, with the bias of, um, I'm just looking for that one move, okay? Uh, it's a move to move type of trade because we don't know what the market wants the stock to do or where the market wants the stock to go. Okay. 
So at the open, I watched it. Um, reading the tape, very important uh, as I uh, stress on a daily basis in my own trading. I uh, learn uh, every day to read the tape. And as I read every day, uh, I get better at it. And uh, reading the tape played a big part of this trade today and uh, played a big part of my thesis and execution. So um, at the open, I mean, this was very weak here on the first minute. And uh, the second minute that came in, it shot back up to 66, but it can't hold above the open price. So that was, uh, that was um, initially kind of gave me a, a sentiment of, first of all, the stock is a little bit overvalued. They overshot their valuation of 36 bucks by literally $30, right? So um, this sell-off at the open kind of uh, made a lot of sense to me. But um, the point is, I don't know how much it's gonna sell off because Zoom is a profitable company. So I waited and then uh, eventually uh, the sell-off kind of stopped and it bounced. It started to bounce, it almost got to 60 bucks. It started to bounce and this, um, green candle that shot up. This was a massive V formation reversal, right? So it indicated the trend uh, and the momentum kind of uh, slowed down by a lot. It retraced about 50% of its move. And then it started holding, and this is where the tape happened, right? Um, I saw a chop in and around uh, the 63 area. Um, I was looking at the 62 where uh, I was actually expecting it to keep selling and uh, by the time it got to 62 actually it made it it reclaimed the 63 right and then it came down and then it started holding 62.5 and then it snapped 62.5 and it started to hold 62. And by the time it got here and uh, once again i was reading the tape and there were a lot of cells coming in uh, from the offer side and all i see on the prints were green 62s and then uh on the level two the the spread start to tighten up uh on the ass side right on the off side uh at first i believe it was about a 20 cent spread at 6320 and then it was uh, on the bid side it stayed at 62 and then the spread came down to uh 6210 and then eventually it got as close as one penny so it went to as close as 62 by 6201 but it never dropped the bid never dropped it popped back up right away came back and tested and then this other big move happened right here on this candle okay and uh look i'm looking at this candle afterwards and then i saw this pop up and fail and i noticed the volume on this candle at 1141 so uh i know that this candle and this these price points were pretty key so uh, from then on, I kind of uh, marked off the highs here at this candle, and I marked off the 62. Now, continue watching it. It tested 62 again, okay? So second time, it held again, came back up, and now it became very uh, obvious to me that the stock was going to chop, and it's selling down, and it's stuck in a range between the 62 to, uh, I believe, what? 63.50 area okay so this was a pretty wide range um as i was waiting some more um it came back down and uh and uh tested the 62 again now what i notice is and it's very hard to explain this in words every time it came down this 62.50 area gave it a lot of trouble okay so right over here uh, as you can see, at uh, 11.52, actually 11.51 all the way to 11.53, these four minutes, the uh, 62.50 area, um, really gave it a lot of problem when it was trying to come down. And even here at uh, 11.42, 11.43, um, this 50 cent mark, gave it a lot of trouble. So that kind of uh, settled in my mind that, okay, 62.50 is a pretty key mark now. Uh, eventually it did snap through, but then once again, 
62 held and um, they even the offers were coming down hard too like the spread was tightening and it was coming down really hard on it but 62 held on and it just soaked up all the sales eventually it started popping and from here it started getting back up now notice this green line this moving average it's actually the VWAP and then it got back up over this um, 6250 area and then tested this uh, 63 and 6350 now. Now when it came down once again, uh, I saw trouble. It, it wasn't able to come down uh, to the 6250 right away. Um, some buyers stepped up and started holding this and then uh, eventually it popped through this 60, 63 what 6350 area but uh this 6350 wasn't really confirmed so it got sold off right away and it came right back down held once again at uh 6250 okay now this is where i got in the very next candle right here this is where i got in uh, as this candle opened up it came down because it had this selling pressure but uh i saw the buyers coming in again uh, holding this 6250 uh, it, it didn't even reach 6250 this time and uh, basically I just got it and uh, the plan was the main stop out was under 62 right here because this was a main support and then as and then uh, I also plan to uh, cut off a little bit uh, right here at this 6230s area if uh, the stock came down and through, uh, knowing that I have the protection of 6250, okay? So uh, I was giving it some wiggle room. If 6250 snapped, I would have gave it a little bit of wiggle room down to the 6230 to see what happens. If, if it might get sucked back up and over 6250, or if it continues, I would have taken some off here if it snapped the 50s again. Because uh, basically what I watched was the bids stepping higher, okay? Every time the stock tried to dip, a price held higher, like the buyers came up and stepped up higher. And first of all, it was 62, and then it had like a right here, um, 6230s area made, made, a, made some sort of a support here, a very slight support. That's why I used the 6230s as well. And then of course I saw 6250s. So when this came down, hit the 6250s, got bought up right away. Um, that was basically it for me. I got in knowing that I have one, two, three levels of support under me. And uh, my plan was to piece it out, piece it out, piece it out if, if my thesis uh, was to fail. Now target was uh, the opening price, the opening print at 65 and perhaps maybe 66 here at the higher base, right? Um, but that was basically it, right? So I got in and uh, the stock chopped around a little bit more. Um, I was looking pretty good here. And uh, as I saw the bids keep stepping up and basically the level two, if you were watching this um, in real time, you would see the buyer step up and uh, level two on the buy side, keep coming higher and higher and uh, this candle here when it came back down uh, and it stuffed hard right um, it once again bounced up right away and I wasn't even scared about this because uh, I already had a plan in place to uh, for the stock to hold 6250 every time it came down to 6250 um, it took a little while for it to snap, right? So I wasn't actually really scared. Had it came down to 6250, then I got to move my finger over the trigger and, and be ready for that snap down, but it never got there. So I just sat and waited. And uh, from here, if you see the screen line, this is the $63 mark. It uh, finally broke out and stayed above 63, right? Um, and buyers started stepping up again here rejects held the 63 and then held the 63 and then held the 63 and uh, that was basically when i knew the trade was going to work right um as you see i mean uh 
if I shrink this down, shrink this box down a little bit more, there's basically uh, three sets of ranges here, okay? Um, using just two sets doesn't doesn't do it justice. Let me see if I can uh, bring up another box here. Here's another box right here. Okay, let's change the color. Um, do transparency. Let's do orange. See how that looks. Okay. So uh, initially we had a, quite a large range, and then a tighter range, and then here when it got above 63, an even tighter range, and when the stock got above 63, that's what it, that that was when I knew my trade was going to work, and I was ready to take profits. So uh, eventually it broke out, and uh, bring in my executions again. Uh, it broke out, um, big big candle. Um, I should have took a little partial there, but I didn't. Um, and then it came down, and uh, noticing that, <clears throat> noticing that it finally broke out above this level here. I should have waited, but I didn't. My target was the 65. Uh, however, when this candle topped out so hard, right, and then it opened lower and dipped in the beginning, if you take a look at this candle right here. Um, right here is where I sold it on this candle. Okay, where's my uh, execution again? There it is. Right there is where I sold it, and uh, I missed my target price by 60 cents. Okay, um, I, I don't long much, so, um, that's why I wanted to record this recap, but uh, in the future, I mean, if I see this setup again, I'm definitely gonna uh, remember this lesson or remember this trade because it's uh, basically, it's a pretty clean trade. I mean, looking at the chart, this is very beautiful. I mean, you see a range, uh, a tighter range and then a tighter range. It's basically uh, the stock contracting and then coiling up and then boom, the spring move. Now, um, I sold it a little bit too early and it hasn't reached my target yet, but had it reached my target, I would have just sold it out um, or sold a majority of it and just watch it go. Now, by the time it got through and uh, held the 65 and then this snap of the 65, I would have uh, gotten out anyways, so, because it hit my target, so I would have gotten out all my lotto shares anyways or if not here, I would have gotten out here when it uh, opened under the 64.50 and came back down again. And this candle closing under this breakout area right here. So um, if I were to trade this again and I have bigger size and I were to take partials, um, this is definitely my stop out here telling me the trade is done, right? Because it wasn't able to hold this breakout area. But um, yeah, um, so once again, A, B, C, D, right? Uh, where we have A right here. Um, let's see, yeah, A right here. We have uh, B where the stock made the first low, okay? And B kind of confirmed when it, uh, got up and over and started making this range. So uh, B right here, ideally kind of like this. And then C would be uh, right here, the higher low. Let's mark that off. Okay, so this, this would be the C area. And then uh, D would be, um, right here at the highs or wherever your target is. Like, I mean, I would use the opening print because uh, of, because it's an IPO, right? And that's a very significant price. It's the only price uh, the institutions can rely on, right? Um, there is no chart history. It's brand new stock. Um, institutions only can trade using technicals on it. I mean, they can't they can't trade any other way, right? That's how institutions trade. 
So um, the 65 level opening price, first print, very key for any IPOs, in my opinion. Um, looking at this range, I mean, come Monday, uh, I'm going to look at the stock again. And uh, of course, this 62 is going to be very key. Um, let's zoom out a little bit. Could I have done uh, better, right? Uh, where could I have sized in? And I've been staring at this chart for hours. I don't think I would have sized in anymore. I mean, if it was, uh, if it wasn't an IPO, if it had chart history on an ABCD, uh, I think I would have sized in here on the breakout, just right at the break, and uh, let it ride. Um, once it topped out here, I would have paid myself some and then waited. And then uh, I would um, kept some size here, knowing this would be my next stop. If the stock came down under here, I would size down just a tad. And then uh, if the stock came down here, I would size down a little bit more. And then when the stock came back down to the even uh, to my even price, I would uh, probably get out right? or my entry price, I would probably get out. But um, if it wasn't an IPO and I had to size in, um, initially I would have took at least two lots here, right? So I would have uh, stopped out one lot here and then at the break of the 62, I would have stopped out the second lot, right? Um, once this started working and once it held the 63 level, I, I might have added uh, one more lot here, make it three lots, and now that if this snapped or if this 6250 snap i would have took off one lot and then this i would have took off another lot and then this would be the third lot so three lots here once it held the 63 and then uh, coming in through i might even if i wasn't fast enough to add uh, from here on this first push i'll definitely take off a lot right um or one tier not yeah one tier one lot same thing Right. If I wasn't able to add, if I were to add though, I would add one tier and uh, on the first push, I would just take off that same tier and then just wait. Right. Um, I mean, it's definitely hindsight looking at this right now, but I think it's important to uh, take a look at uh, the trades that really give you an edge and uh, looking back at them and see how you could have done better. So next time when you do, identify the same setup, right? You can trade it better. Um, I think uh, at the end of the day, if uh, you weren't adding size in here and you see the setup, or the next time I trade this, or the next few times, if I don't add size here or here, and I see the same setup, then uh, I'm, I would, I would consider it a mistake, right? Because as a trader, I want to extract as much value as I could when I do see a trade with an edge, right? So this ABCD definitely has an edge. Um, I also want to uh, reiterate that there's three types of trades that uh, I think about before making a thesis, right? So scalp trade, the move to move, which is this, this is one move, or the hold all day trend or the trade to hold, right? So um, if this wasn't an IPO, I would have uh, made this a trade to hold trend um, and uh, basically took it long, perhaps above and beyond this uh, D, D part, right? Um, overall, uh, I think there are a few good lessons here, okay? We know that IPOs, uh, you cannot uh, predict what the sediment of the stock is uh, within just one day of, uh, of history. And uh, if you're gonna trade an IPO, most of the time it's basically a move to move and you're just looking for a setup, right? Um, and uh, yeah, basically that's it. Reading the tape helped a lot. Uh, I'm always gonna read the tape. I think because of the tape, I was able to get in in front of this move. Uh, yes, you can see the candles form, right? And chart patterns are really important, right? But uh, what happens 
in between these candles, I think it's uh, you can only tell from reading the tape and the level two, okay? And because I was doing that, I saw that uh, basically every time it dipped, it held a higher price, okay? Um, yes, some could say, okay, so you can say the same thing at the candles as well, but um, I wouldn't say it's exactly the same, right? Uh, with the candle, you actually have to wait for the candle to finish. With the tape, I can actually see see it happening live, right? Um, and I can see the prices getting higher and the buyers stepping up, right? So um, I was able to get a little bit ahead in front of the move. Uh, I think the entry was okay, 62.90. Uh, it's still a little late, to be quite honest. Like uh, 62.90 is what? Right here. I think uh, I could have gotten in anywhere a little bit better here, maybe 10, 20 cents better, right? To keep my uh, stop a little bit tighter, but uh, it is what it is. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna mark this off into my playbook trade, um, specifically ABCD IPO day one. Uh, this ABCD pattern you see a lot actually on a lot of different tickers. So um, just this pattern alone is a setup, right? Um, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Uh, make sure you hit a thumbs up there. Um, I'll be watching the comments and uh, looking forward to uh, interacting with you guys if you have any questions. And um, I'll see you guys all bright and early on Monday. Uh, happy Easter, happy long weekend, and have a great evening. Ciao.